Superman, son of Kal-El, represents a very exciting moment and a potentially bright new future for Superman comics. This is a new Superman comic about a new Superman written by Tom Taylor and drawn by John Timms that means so much for the world of Superman. Now, these days, I don't spend a lot of time digging into discourse. Life is too short. But I can only assume, based on the fact that the Superman in this comic, son of Kal-El, is bisexual, there must have been an enormous amount of backlash from homophobic Superman fans. And if any of them are watching this video right now, can you just quietly remove yourself? You don't even need to make a comment. You can just go. They won't. But if there has been a backlash against the idea of a bisexual Superman, every single person involved in that backlash does not understand Superman at all. Just a bunch of sad gatekeeping nerds who don't understand the context and the beauty of the properties and characters and stories that they claim to enjoy. So just, just go away. Now that that's out of the way, I wanna talk about how great this comic book is and why. In case you're a regular on my channel and you've never read a Superman comic before, all you need to know here is that Superman and Lois Lane are married and have had a son who is now about 18 years old and his name is John Kent, named after Superman's dad, Jonathan Kent. His adopted dad, not his birth dad, who blew up along with their planet. John Kent is half Kryptonian, half human, and he is the new Superman. Obviously, it's a Superman comic, it's a DC comic, it's a comic, so it's not gonna stay that way forever. There will be shifts and changes, just like when Dick Grayson was Batman for a little while until he wasn't anymore. You know how comics work. Death is a revolving door, characters come in and then go away again, or they change their role and he'll go back to being a sidekick, I don't, whatever. Right now, Superman's bisexual son is Superman. While his dad is heading off-world to deal with some intergalactic calamity. And the reason why this is a bright new future for Superman is not that he's bisexual, although that's part of it. The main thing is that this is a more politically proactive look at Superman. This is a Superman that reflects the 21st century, the current political zeitgeist, especially in the United States. Superman is a protector of peace. He is a symbol of what the ideal Americana could be. And that means we have to look at the good and the bad, we have to look at progressive politics and fascism, and figure out what Superman should be, what Superman should represent, what bright light he should be shining into the future. If that makes any sense, that sounded messy, didn't it? And on the back here, it says, truth, justice, and a better world. One of Superman's many taglines has always been truth, justice, and the American way. That rings very differently these days. Arguably, it always has done. What is the American way? In a post-Trump world, the American way is not necessarily a thing we want. So truth, justice, and a better world? That sounds more noble and more hopeful. It actually reminds me of an Enter Shikari song where they talked about Brexit and how we shouldn't want to take our countries back. We should want to take our countries forward. And that's what this book tackles. There's a bit at the beginning that I just wanna read out where the original Superman, Clark Kent, and his son are standing on the moon, looking at the earth, and having a chat, a little father-son moment. And John finally asks his dad the big question, a question that I've asked Superman before in my own mind, which is, why don't you do more? And Clark Kent slash Kal-El says this, I think part of me holds back because I wasn't born here. I can help, but I can't lead, except by example. Part of me feels it's not my place. And that is something that Superman has always done, lead by example. That's what makes Superman comics so important. Superman leads by example. He sets a good example for what a good person looks like, and we hope that people in the story, people in the world, will follow that example, and obviously, more importantly, we hope that readers will as well. Superman can serve as an inspiration for young kids and adults alike 
to develop a kind of moral compass when it comes to fighting for good, helping the little guy, truth and justice, etc. That's why I need any homophobes who are not happy with the state of Superman to leave, because they don't understand the concepts of truth and justice. They don't get Superman. Tom Taylor gets Superman. And when John says to him, but you're the greatest hero on this planet, if you won't step up, who will? And Clark says, I was thinking you. This is your planet, John. This is your place. And John jokes and says, are you literally dropping the weight of the world on my shoulders? And Clark says, you won't have to lift it alone. You'll have friends to help bear the burden. This conversation between a father and son, between the world's greatest hero and the future of Superman, this is such an important moment. And it shows us that the writer, Tom Taylor, really understands Superman. His place in everything, what he's capable of, reasons why he does hold back and feels like ethically he should, and how his son, who is an Earthling, might be able to do what he feels he never could. And politically, this comic is really on the nose when it comes to what it believes is right and wrong. Things like climate change and the rise of fascism are in here, they are dealt with. Superman is a refugee who shows gratitude to his adopted planet and country who uses his skills and his abilities to fight for a better future. He's not just defending, and all the connotations that the word defend has, and a lot of them are not good, because they can be used for ill. He's pushing the world forward, but he says to his son, there's only so much I can do, I can only lead by example. So now we have a Superman who can push forward. And the fact that he's bisexual is really important because it shows how the zeitgeist has changed. How society, rightly so, is growing to accept queer people of all types, even slowly, even if it's just on the ground level, even if conservative fascistic politicians are not getting the memo. Ordinary people are kind and accepting, and so ordinary readers should be okay with Superman's son kissing a guy, which he does in this comic, and it's beautiful. Not only that, but the guy he kisses, the guy who might end up being his boyfriend, is a young punk journalist who idolizes Lois Lane and is doing his best to share real news, cut through all the crap, avoid bias and corporate interest, and instead report on what's actually happening, using, again, his own skills, his own abilities, and his own tenacity. A young punk journalist who believes in the truth more than anything, is the perfect partner for a young Superman who wants to change the world and lead it, not just by example, but actually maybe get involved in politics and do something that could shift and change the state of the US for the better. This is absolutely huge. If you're someone who even has a passing interest in Superman, and you've watched any of those god-awful DC films made by Zack Snyder over the last 10 years, you need to read this. Because Zack Snyder is a hack writer, I hate that man, I hate what he does, I hate the damage that he's been doing to wonderful properties like Watchmen and Superman himself. That man has done so much damage to incredible characters and stories. The cynicism of it all. The way that he stitches fascistic ideas into his stories. The guy is bloody awful. He's spent years ruining the image of Superman. And anyone who's watched and maybe even enjoyed his dreadful films, you need to read this. This is what Superman looks like. Tom Taylor understands Superman. He understands what Superman does the kindness at the center of this man, the way that Superman represents respect for all people, and the hope for change. And that change leads to equality for all. Superman's ideals represent peace, where people are no longer in danger, people are no longer at risk of things like homelessness or hunger. All these things have been covered in Superman comics in the past. He's the man of tomorrow, pushing society into a safer, happier, healthy place. And now he has a son, born on Earth, son of Lois Lane, a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist. This kid can be the best person. And he's bisexual. You've got a queer kid who is half Superman, half Lois Lane, 
and he could be the best of us. And so Tom Taylor leans into that idea to present us with a really exciting new Superman comic. And also bear in mind, a lot of people don't like Superman because he's overpowered and therefore boring. This comic is proof of the fact that that's simply not true. I'm a huge Superman fan, I love Superman to bits. I always have done because I just don't believe in that narrative. What makes Superman so important, as opposed to other superheroes, especially in the DC universe, is what he is a symbol of. People always talk about Superman being a symbol, it's true. And so his best stories come from his conversations with people, his emotional connections, his relationships, his politics, the things that he can do for other people, the ways that he can change things and brighten the world and make tomorrow look like a thing you actually want to move towards. And that's what John Kent is going to be. I don't know where this comic is going, I don't know if we will continue to see progress in the world of Superman, but I really hope so, because this represents a very bright future for Superman. Please, please check this out. If you have any interest in comic books or superheroes, this is what Superman should look like. This is a comic that gets it. Now it's time for my Patreon book recommendation of the week. This recommendation comes from Hannah, and it is Byline of Hope by Helen Keller. Many people assume that Miss Keller's story ends with the miracle at the water pump when she was a little girl spelling water. That is just the beginning moment in her remarkable life. Keller went on to become a college graduate and world traveler, she was a great writer with a genius mastery of language and a poetic sense of the world around her. Not only that, but she worked as a social activist much of her life, writing and working on behalf of the disabled, the poor, children, and women. Here, Dr. Haller collects Helen's many, many essays and articles which describe nature, explore the arts, promote socialism, discuss spirituality, and advocate for human rights. This book breaks through the stereotypes and ableism many people still carry today. It is a triumph, an awareness, a struggle, and a call to action for all readers. An absolutely essential book in understanding our world. Hannah, that was so beautifully written. Thank you so much for such a brilliant recommendation. Of course, everyone knows who Helen Keller was, but I've never read this book. There's only so much I know about her. And if you're the same as me, then we need to be reading this book. Thank you so much, Hannah. Okay, go read the works of Helen Keller, please. And also check out this Superman comic if you want to really understand what Superman is supposed to look like, feel like, and represent. And subscribe for books.